Hey, it's Erin. Have you ever heard the phrase, bodybuilding competitions are won from the back? If so, then you understand the importance of training your back versus only training mirror muscles or muscles that you can readily see. A lot of times as competitors, we'll get on stage and the front of the competitor looks great. And then when they turn around, it's almost like they forgot back day. Now, there are some really great aesthetic benefits to training back, such as tying the upper and lower body together. So if you have a, a very muscular lower body, which a lot of us ladies do, then building your upper body can create that balance from top to bottom. Also, it can give you the illusion of a smaller waist. We have a waist that's God-given. So if yours is a bit on the broad side, like mine is from the front, I kind of feel like SpongeBob from time to time. Building your upper back especially can help create that width across the upper body and make the waist look really small. So you have those aesthetic benefits. Now, in terms of health benefits, you're looking at improved strength, reduced risk of injury, and also improved posture. So if you have a tendency to slouch, training your back can help bring your chest up. It can help just give you that better posture. So today's workout is going to be focused on the back and also the rear delts. You know, I like to throw in some rear delt training with the back because it just ties the whole physique in together. And if you neglect those rear delts, then it, it looks incomplete. So we're just going to go through some of my favorite exercises for building width across the upper back so you can create that V taper or superhero physique. Let's train. Our first exercise is a T-bar row. Now the landmine attachment is very helpful for this exercise as it can control the movement of the bar. If you don't have this, don't worry, you can actually place the bar in a sturdy corner. So make sure you've got concrete or something reinforced behind it, not just drywall. Now for the actual exercise, I like to use 25 pound plates as it gives you a bit more range of motion and your range of motion is important when it comes to muscle growth. Feet are going to be about one and a half times shoulder width and you'll need a double D attachment so you can do a neutral grip. So you have thumbs wrapped around the bar, palms facing each other, and I like to stand at about a 45 degree angle with the upper body, a little bit taller, as this is going to hit the upper back a bit more. Now, what I want you to do is think about exploding upwards using your lats and giving a nice mid rep pause and slowly lowering the bar back down. Now, with the faster concentric move, that's the move as you pull the bar to your chest, I want you to think about keeping your elbows in, pulling the weight through the elbow, and almost think about trying to squeeze your shoulder blades together at the top. And this is going to help really engage those back muscles. And I want you to also think about keeping your back flat and try to minimize the use of momentum. So you wanna to try to stay in a fixed position with your knees slightly bent to absorb the shock. Next exercise is a pause rep lat pull down. Now pause reps are really effective when it comes to engaging the lats and also improving mind muscle connection. So what I want you to do is take an overhand grip and really think about just your hand all the way to your elbow as being part of the bar itself. So I want you to really focus on pulling through the elbow, keeping your upper body nice and tall, making sure that you have the pad set so that you are in a static position. So the bar is not pulling you up and creating any kind of momentum. And I want you to really squeeze your lats and focus on pulling down using just your back muscles. And it can help as you're pulling down to almost think about trying to pull your elbows together. So you're thinking about pulling both the weight down and pulling against the bar itself. And similar to the T-bar row, I want you to think about a slow negative. So you're controlling the weight at every step of the way. 
Next exercise is a single arm Smith machine row. Single arm exercises are excellent for improving symmetry from right side to left side. And I would recommend starting with your non-dominant side. So that's starting with your weaker side and however many reps you're able to get on that weaker side, that's what you're going to do on your stronger side. Now for setup of this exercise, you want to be relatively close to the bar and you're going to use an overhand grip on it, which actually turns out to be a neutral grip. So your palm is going to be facing your body. And with this, you can kind of vary your stance if you want. So feet are going to be about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit narrower, but you want to create a nice solid foundation. And you can stand a little bit more upright if you want to hit higher up on the lat, or you can bend over a bit more until your body is about parallel to the floor. So you have that range to kind of work with. So experiment, see what feels best for you. And for this, you're just going to pull the bar straight up. And I want you to really, again, feel it in your lats and control the weight on the way back down. So having the Smith machine is going to help keep your body and keep your, your arm in a fixed plane. So as you're switching sides from left to right, for example, I want you to focus on keeping your feet in the same position, standing the same distance from the bar, using the same grip. And of course, as you're pulling, I want you to make sure that you're pulling right around that torso area. So, you know, it's okay to take a little bit of a higher grasp or a higher reach on that bar as long as you're doing it on both sides. So you want to make sure that from right side to left is a mirror image. Next, we're moving on to a wide grip lat push down. Now, the wide grip, you're going to go a little bit lighter than you would normally go on your push downs. And this is also going to help build width across the back. So there are a couple of different stances you can take. I like to take a staggered stance and also like to make sure I'm switching sides with that staggered stance with each set. And getting into that staggered stance, leaning forward is going to help really isolate the upper lats. You're also going to isolate teres, which is a small but beautiful muscle that's right under the back of the arm, your rhomboid. So you are going to really hit these smaller muscles, which are going to give you not only width, but detail in the back. So beautiful rippling muscles, if you will. Now you're taking an overhand grip. The grip is going to be about one and a half times to two times shoulder width. And this is a push down. So what I want you to do is instead of thinking of pulling the weight down, I want you to think about kind of hollowing out your upper back just a bit and think about pushing that bar to your knees. So you're creating a bit of an arc and you're, you're also really targeting that upper back by hollowing out a bit and focusing primarily on pushing towards the knee. And on the way back up, really control that weight. Don't spend too much time at the top and keep that time under tension going. Our last exercise is an incline bench lateral raise. Now for this exercise, I love performing it on the incline bench for a couple of reasons. One, you're going to limit or eliminate the use of momentum. So your chest is going to be a bench against the bench. Momentum is not going to be used. And the second reason is that not only is it hitting your side delts, but this is an excellent variation for those rear delts. Now, given that, once you go a little bit lighter on this exercise than you would normally go for regular lateral raise. And you're going to use grip where your thumbs wrapped around the dumbbells and you've got a slight bend to the elbow. Even though you're on the incline bench, I want you to think about keeping your chest up and spending the least amount of time as possible at that bottom position. And you're going to Think about pushing the dumbbells away, sort of like you would push a door open or think about uh, you have a cape on and you're opening a cape. So those are a couple of cues that might be helpful. And as you are extending, pushing the dumbbells up, get to that mid-rep point, 
give a slight pause if you'd like, and control the weight on the way down. Now, hopefully you're performing this exercise, you're either able to see your delts or you're able to look in the mirror. Just make sure you're performing the exercise evenly from left side to right side and make sure that you're not holding one dumbbell further ahead of the other, that you're in a nice uh, 180 degree line there. Make sure you're pushing those dumbbells away, slight bend in the elbow, slow controlled negative, and then right back up with it. When you're training your back or any other muscle you can't see, a very strong mind-muscle connection is important. So take your time, and once you feel the muscle engaged, it's okay to do partial reps. Make sure you go nice and light, do some pause reps, and really feel the muscle working. The stronger that mind-muscle connection is, the better your results are going to be with each rep. Now, one thing that I really love in terms of solidifying that my muscle connection is to go get a cheap full length mirror, put it in your bathroom so you can see your back. And then what I want you to do is focus on flaring the lats, focus on doing some, some rows using just isometrics. So just use your, your own body weight, if you will, and imagine yourself doing a lat pull down and engage those muscles and look in the mirror for that visual feedback. And that way, when you're at the gym, you're able to tie everything together. You can visually see those muscles working in your mind. So that's one tip for, or actually a few tips for improving mind muscle connection. If you like this video, let me know. If there's something specific that you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. That's it for this time. Until next time, train hard, y'all.